Today we're going to do some troubleshooting, some installation or basic troubleshooting. If there's a problem, we need to figure out why, fix the problem, and then move on. So today we've got a Zenus Compact Plus drive with a Tamagawa encoder and a Tamagawa motor. So we're going to look at the Zenus Plus. It's a Zenus Compact EtherCAT. So we'll take a look at the XEC data sheet here. And this is the drive. It's got a nice metal case. Uh, it's got good cabling, shielding, and grounding. And so for troubleshooting the drive, uh, we'll take a look at the installation. Um, we'll look at the LED of the status indicator. So uh, we can also take a look at the LED of the EtherCAT, but uh, we're just gonna keep it simple today and concentrate on the drive status indicator. So it's a little blinking red, solid red, or double green blinking, slow blinking, fast blinking, solid green. Solid green is good. That's what we wanna get to at the end of the day. Um, if you got blinking, you got a latched fault. Here's a list of the faults. Uh, if you got uh, fast blinking, Double blinking, it's the stow safety uh, circuit. Um, and uh, we'll take a look at a real system here and do a little step-by-step. -step. So I'm gonna do this one step-by-step -step here. I've got my Zenus Compact, and you can see the metal case has a connection to the frame or earth so that the metal gets a good path to earth. Um, Usually, you might find that we just plug in everything and, and, and bring it up like normal, which is fine. But today, we're going to do a little step-by-step. -step. So I'm going to connect the 24-volt power supply. Um, really, what we should do is the power supply should be off and then switch on. Um, not a good idea to hop, hop swap 24 volts. And you can see we've got a little green activity from the Cat. There's a master somewhere. Um, we're not interested in that so much, but that's some data activity. And then this is status indicator. It's a solid red light. So that means there's a fault in the drive right now. And uh, there's plenty of reasons to have a continuous fault. One is I don't have AC power hooked up. So that's a very important thing for the drive is AC power. So I'm going to hook up the AC power. Okay, now presumably I have AC power hooked up. Um, I can double check that with my uh, voltmeter here. Put it on AC. I got 97 volts AC. My AC line's a little low. That's very unusual for 120. Um, I've got my voltage coming through a variant here. So now I got a little bit of a high line. So anywhere. In that range of you know 110, 115, what whatever the standard is for for a factory voltage 120. So we're looking pretty good here. Now you can see that my indicator is no longer a solid red; it's a blinking red. So what we want to do then is to uh, understand that that's that's a that's a latched fault. So something bad has happened, like the feedback device is not connected. So we got to connect the feedback device. And remember, don't hop swap, hop swap. So make sure the power is turned off before you plug in the feedback device. Now also we have the motor power wires and this voltmeter is very handy for checking out the, uh, the ohms of the coils. So I've got the power off here, everything's fine. So I can measure the resistance between pairs of wires and I can see I've got about 10 or 11 ohms between pairs of wires. That's good. You know, if that's my winding resistance, I just measured it through the cable. If it's only supposed to be one ohm and it measures 10, then there's a problem with the motor, okay? So if there's an open circuit, it could just be in the connector here. So we have a little tool that we can use to open up the socket, and then you can strip off 
Make sure you don't clamp on the insulation. That happens sometimes. So don't clamp on the insulation. So this motor also has a mechanical problem. I can't physically turn the shaft. Now, sometimes a motor will have a brake, and that gets connected to the brake output with respect to the 24 volt. And um, but this motor does not have a brake, so it's it's seized up. Something else happened bad to this motor. Um, but I'm going to connect the motor power wires. I got the earth to the case. Normally, this motor gets connected, mounted to the to the frame of the machine, and, and that provides a good case for the path to earth for the case. The feedback cables are connected, and pin one inside here going to the frame, which has a path to earth. So the shield has a path to earth. This shield has a path to earth. Uh, paths to earth are very important. Now we're going to turn this on and see what we got here. So you get a fault, you hook up the feedback device. And now we don't have the red light anymore. We got the blinking green fast. So I recognize that as the stow, safe torque off. And I'm using a stow jumper here to bypass that. And now I've got a steady blinking green light, which just says, hey, my drive's disabled, waiting for the master to come in and give it some commands. And you can see the EasyCat master is connected to the in. If you had another one, you could connect it to the out and go to the next drive. We're going to take a look at the Kamigawa motor. I've got the TS4602. It's 100 volt, it's the E100 winding. It says 1.8 amps, 1.1 amps. So uh, we need to take a closer look at all the options that we have uh, so that we can understand the cabling and wiring. So I've got an option 10, an option 20 here, 17 bit absolute. It's a 33 bit altogether, so there's multi turn and that would have a battery. Uh, there's no break. It's 100 volt AC. These are some of the basic things about the motor. So when we look at the wiring on this, we can see we've got uh, red, white, and black. Um, we need to, to make sure that these are wired to the drive according to the um, design engineer's drawings. Uh, I wouldn't just you know, hook them up willy-nilly. You know, if there's a break, you got a couple of wires going to the the brake feedback, and then we look at the feedback device. This is a single turn feedback. We can see, you know, the pin number from the connector, the, the blue and the blue black, and the red black for five volts. But uh, this is an absolute multi turn. So, you know, shield plus five and ground, data, data not. But it's also got a brown, brown black, which is the battery. So VB is uh, voltage for the battery. And that gives us the multi-turn data. So we'll use that information for looking at the cabling and making sure that everything's connected. So I've checked the AC power coming in is good. I've checked the 24 volts is good. If I had a break, I'd make sure that that's hooked up. Uh, I've got the stove connected. Um, the motor is ohmed out. The feedback cable's been checked. I got the flashing green light, which says I'm ready to be enabled, the master can come in and enable it. Now, if I need to do some further troubleshooting, we can use a serial cable. This is a USB to RJ, and we can run CME2 software to connect to the drive over the serial port. So we'll connect this up and take a look at that. I'm going to connect CME2 over the serial port to the drive. So I can take a look at what's going on in the drive. So tools, communication wizard. Um, if I had CAN, I could connect CAN. If I remove the EtherCAT master, I could use a Ethernet cable. But I usually don't want to disconnect the EtherCAT master just to monitor. Um, if we try to jog, we'll have to disconnect them. But for now, we'll just use the serial port and this finds the USB drivers and then connects to the drive. So uh, we can look at the control panel to see the status. We're in a can open EtherCAT mode. Excellent, the drive software disabled. 
That means we're in a pre-op state and the EtherCAT master comes in and enables us. Uh, I'm going to take this out of EtherCAT mode and I'm going to disconnect the EtherCAT master um, so I can see that I can enable the drive. And if I disable it, I have to make sure, you know, that I'm back in the EtherCAT mode. Um, so from here, you know, we can monitor the position and we can also look at the error log. Um, the error log will have any active fault. So that happened. Power's been disconnected. I can look at the history over time. Uh, oh, I had a latch feedback fault. That's probably from the time I didn't have the, the feedback connected in. So eight minutes ago, you know, after 30 minutes, I had an undervoltage and a feedback fault. That's probably when I unplugged the feedback device. The frequency of the errors, the encoder status. Well, look at that. I got a battery fault, a battery warning, uh, and, and an error bit warning. Now, warnings don't shut things down. And the battery fault won't do anything if it's, you're going to use it as a single turn. Sometimes we don't care if it's multi-turn or not, so we can ignore the battery fault. But if you want multi-turn, you can't ignore the battery fault. And uh, we can see here, that's where the battery is plugged in in this system. Usually it's in the cable or in an interconnect box too, but you know the battery voltage keeps the multi-turn position alive in the Tamagawa. So all this looks good. Uh, we looked at the error log. Uh, we can save a CCX file. So if you have an important uh, file, just give it the name based on your device and save it. That can be emailed to somebody for technical support. Uh, when you're in the error log, you know you can clear the error log of previous history, run to get the problem. Or maybe you want to save the error log before you clear it. So do it, you know, see what the history says, give it a name, save that. So the CCX file and the error log are good for people to help troubleshoot this. And um, that's about it. We don't really want to mess with anything here uh, if the EtherCAT master is running. So we can just monitor things like, you know, when the bus voltage droops down. You know, it should be 165 or so volts, but if something happens to our AC power, we get an under voltage. Um, so we can see what, what goes on here. The CME2 user guide also has fault descriptions. So you can look up uh, what goes on, you know, amp over temperature, what to do, feedback error, uh, under voltage, over voltage. You know, that's a problem if you're stopping too fast and you don't have a regen resistor. Following error, that's usually preceded by uh, current limit warning or voltage limit warning. Warnings are not errors. There's not a problem until there's a problem, which is a following error fault. Um, so these are good things to take a look at in, in the system. Uh, if you look at the error log, we can decode what everything means. Well, on the EtherCAT, you can see the green flashing lights for link activity. When we disconnect, there's no activity. That's not a very interesting light, but the, the run light indicates uh, if it's off, you're in an init state. When the master comes on, it puts the drive in a pre-op state. Uh, if it's a single flash, you're in a safe op, or if it's solid on, you're in operation. So operating state is a normal state. If it's red, then you've got uh, some problems. A double flash is a watchdog timeout. You know, maybe the cable became disconnected and plugged back in. Um, if there's a local error in the slave, you get a single flash. And uh, these, these states are handled by the EtherCAT master, and the EtherCAT master should give us instructions on what we do to try to solve the problem. But there are light indicators there to help us. Um, it's also a good idea if your system has a node ID set, the alias switch can be used to set the node address, say, switch S2 to 1, and you got node 1. Um, normally, the EtherCAT addresses take effect by physical location in the network. So um, if you're not using the alias, then it's the physical location is, is very important. And now for some advanced troubleshooting, we can see the scope 
has the profile aborted, we got an under voltage and a current limit, and this is caused by the bus voltage being half of its normal AC value. Thank you.